I'm here to do something that I've been... That's gross. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here to do something that I've been meaning to do for the longest time, but then I ran into some issues that needed to be fixed. As you guys know, my game hasn't been running at its best, so I've been trying and experimenting and I think finally my game is running just like it should have always been running. And so just like I've been asked many, many times, I'm finally going to be making a video in which I'm going to be showing you guys some ways and giving you guys some tips on things that you can do to make sure that the game is going to run well and what you can do to improve your frame rate. I really hope these help you and without much further ado, let's get into the video. So here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to be putting some timestamps in description if you want to skip to something that you really want to know how to do but pretty much i'm gonna go with little baby steps we're gonna start with what you can do to make sure that your computer can run the game well and after we make sure that computer can handle it what can we do before entering the game to ensure that the game can run well and then once we are in game what can we do to not have a lot of lag. First thing we're gonna be doing here is making sure that The Sims 4 can run on our computer. So going over to Origin, you're gonna look up The Sims 4. Once you see it, click on Learn More. And then if you go down and click on More, you can choose the system requirements. And here you can see what you need, what is the minimum and what is the recommended specs for you to run the game. One thing to keep in mind though is that The Sims 4 is not a game that is completed. It's a game that keeps on expanding and there's always new things coming out. And it's also a game that has a lot of mods and custom content which you can have. And all of that, the more stuff you add onto the base game, it's just gonna... What you see here, it's definitely gonna change over time. It has already changed a little bit with the last expansion pack that came out, so... If you are planning on getting more expansion packs, stuff packs, whatever, or using mods and custom content, it's good for you to have something that's higher than what you see here. But if you have checked specs and you think your computer can run well, then let's move on to the second step. And that is checking to see if our computer drivers are up to date. To do that, you're going to go over here to the Windows icon and you're going to look up for the control panel. My computer is in Portuguese, but I'm going to try to translate everything. So you're going to go to system and security, go to system and over on the left side, you're going to see an option that says manage devices. You're going to click on it and a window is going to pop up here you can see every component of your computer. And for example, if I go to my graphics card, I can click on this little arrow and this is my graphics card. What I can do to make sure that my graphics card is up to date is right clicking it and click on update driver. And Windows is gonna look up automatically for any updates online. And if there's any, you can update it, but if there's not, then you are good to go. So if you have checked all these components and you know for sure that everything is up to date, next thing that you can do is actually with the help of a software. And that software is this one over here, CCleaner. It is a free software. You can pay for the professional version, but what do you want to do here? You can do it in free version of software, but you can choose to pay if you want to support it. But pretty much you're just going to go to the cleaner section, which is the one we are in right now. And if you don't know what CCleaner does, you can look up their website. They have all the info that you need to know if you are uncertain about using it and you want to make sure what exactly does your computer. But for those of you who are not very tech savvy, I'm going to try to explain this the easiest way I can, pretty much by using your computer, either by going online and by visiting different websites. Those websites can save files in your computer. By logging into an account, your computer might save up session files. By using a software and saving up projects, your system is going to save that. Your download history, your internet history, it's just taking up space and the more you do things, the more files it's going to accumulate and it's just files that are taking up space in your computer and over time it might slow down your computer. And if you go over here to the side, you can see exactly what it's going to delete. If you have Microsoft Edge, it's going to delete the internet cache, the internet history, the cookies. 
One thing that annoyed me is that every time I used CCleaner in past, I would get logged out. And so if I went online right after using CCleaner, I would have to log into YouTube, all of my other social media, which can be a drag when you use a lot of different websites. So if you don't want that, you can go to applications and here you can see the browser you are using and you can just unmark the box for CCleaner to delete your internet sessions. To use CCleaner, you're gonna click on Analyze and this is gonna scan your computer, see if there's anything for you to delete. And once it's done scanning, it will tell you how much it's gonna be able to remove. In this case, right now it's 41.4 megabytes. And so, you're gonna click on Run Cleaner and this is gonna delete files forever from your computer, just like that. But when you are using CCleaner, please do not use the registry. It just doesn't work as it should. It sometimes deletes files that you actually need for softwares to run on your computer. There has been many times, and I can show you guys an example. If I scan for issues right now, this is actually gonna take some files that are important for me. Right over here, all of my Sims 2 game packs, are here with a problem on the application path. There is no problem whatsoever. In if, and if I do remove this, the game is not gonna run and I need to download a fix from the internet. So do not use the registry. If you don't know anything about computers, you might just mess up something. So just use the cleaner. That's the safest and that's really all that you need. And this concludes some of the things that you can do on your computer to make sure that your computer is healthy, it's doing well and it can run the game well. So now we're gonna move on to Artigen, which is already over here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of Artigen. It has some issues. And Artigen has some things that can actually slow down your game. The fact that you have to be connected, and I don't know if it's just me or the fact that I have really bad internet connection, but that affects my game a little bit. Sometimes I see a huge improvement. The game loads a lot faster when I'm playing offline. Some other times I don't really see a difference. Uh, but one thing that I keep noticing and that I see really affects the game is the notifications. So a few things that you can do is first of all, go to Artigen, Application Settings, click on More, Artigen in Game, disable it. What this does is that every time your friends send you a message or they enter a game or exit the game, you're going to get a notification and that sometimes can slow you down a little. And I don't know if you guys ever experienced that, but sometimes when Max's favorites a lot or a family and you get a notification in game, doesn't that slow down your game a little bit? For me it does. So the fact that you have to play online can actually affect you a little bit. And I don't know if it is because I don't have good internet connection, but you guys can try it out and see if it actually does a difference for you. I know with my old phone, every time I would turn on the Wi-Fi, I would get so many notifications that my phone would freeze. So I don't know if it's that. So I don't know if it's a game that can't handle all the notifications coming up or if it's really an internet issue, but you can try it out and see if it does something for you. Another thing that can help you as well is is to go offline. You can still play the game, you can do everything except going into the gallery and downloading things from the gallery. Another thing that you can do to make sure that the game is gonna run well is making sure that you are running the correct version of the game. So if you go over to your game library and you click on The Sims 4, you're gonna want to click on Settings and go to Game Properties. Here you're gonna go to Advanced Launch Options and as you can see, I am running 64-bit version. And as you can see, there's two versions of the game, the 32-bit and 64-bit. Which one works best for you? That is what you have to see. So if you go over to the Windows button over here again, go to Control Panel, go to Security System, then click on System. Here, you're gonna be able to see if your system is a 64-bit system or a 32-bit. In my case, it's a 64-bit, so I'm gonna have to use a 64-bit version because that's what's gonna perform the best on my system. Now, I'm gonna move over to the Sims 4 folder, which I think is a folder that all of us are very used to. If you go to your documents, electronic arts, the Sims 4, this is your Sims 4 folder. This is where you have everything. Well, almost everything. This is where you install your mods. This is where you put QC music if you want for your game. This is where you have your screenshots, your save files. But one thing that you might start noticing over time is the more you play the game, the slower the game might get. And if you look at my folder right now, there's all of these crash files and there's a lot of 
there's a lot more files than what I started the game with. And yes, there are files over here that you can delete, but what I find easier to do is resetting your game. And how do you reset your game? Go over back to the Electronic Arts folder, click on your Sims 4 folder and change its name. You can just add a letter in front of the name. Doesn't really matter to what you call it. After you do this, you're gonna go over to Origin and you're gonna open up your game. And as you can see, you're gonna have all of this pop up all over again. And that's because you changed the name of your Sims 4 folder. So the game thinks this is your first time opening up the game after reinstalling it or even buying it for the first time. So you're just gonna want to close all of this. And you might notice that your save files aren't here. There's nothing here. So where are your save files? Do not worry, we're gonna get into it. So what you're gonna want to do is go ahead and exit the game. And if you go over to where you were before, before the Electronic Arts folder, you're gonna see that you have a brand new Sims 4 folder. And this one is completely clean. If you compare this one to the previous one I had, which it isn't even that old. I think I did this a month ago. <laughs> and he already has all of these other extra files. So it's good to do this whenever you have the time. It really makes a huge difference in your game, guys. So if you compare the two, you can see this one is a lot more packed than this one. And here in the brand new folder, you can see that your save folder is empty, screenshots is empty, but you have nothing to worry about because everything is right over in this folder your screenshots, your save files, everything is in here. So what you're gonna want to do as soon as you create this brand new Sims 4 folder is you're gonna pick up the mods folder, saves, try, options in here, and you're gonna delete these files. Now going over to the previous Sims 4 folder you had, you're gonna move to the new one, the mods, if you have any mods for your game, your save files right over there. The screenshots, you can keep them over here because if you have too many, it might affect the game and the tray folder. If you have any custom music, you can move this back in as well. And you're also gonna want to move the options in a file right over here. So this is what you're gonna have in your new folder. And this one, you can delete it, but for now you can just keep it on site and then delete it later. And I'm gonna try to explain very briefly what each of these things that you just saved are. The mods folder is all of your custom content mods that you have in your game. Your save folder is where all of your save files are. Your tray folder, I'm actually gonna explain this. I'm gonna give you guys a visual. I think it's easier for you to understand. I'm gonna move this folder out to show you what it does, but you don't need to do this. What I'm doing here, you don't need to do it. So let's say you are in game and you want to go to the gallery to download some Sims or some houses. You're gonna open it up and let's go to community. Let's say I want to download this. So I'm gonna save it to my library. And it's gonna be right over here, as well as all of these other lots. Now, if I go back to the Sims 4 folder that I was at, you're gonna see that I have these files over here. And these files represent all of these things that I have on my library. If I go in game and I delete this right over here, and I go back to my folder, you're gonna see that my folder is now a little bit smaller. And that's because I deleted something from my library. So all of your safe sims, houses, pets, anything that you have in your library is gonna be stored in this folder called the tray folder. Now, if you have too many files, too many sims, too many houses, the game might start to get slower and maybe there are even some files here that are corrupt. And if you have too much stuff here, I feel like I'm not the only one that sometimes has to wait a really long time for everything to load up because there's just too much stuff there. So what I recommend you to do is over time, checking what you have over here, go to advanced, include custom content, see what you really have over here and if you don't want something delete it from here there's an issue with the gallery which is sometimes when you click to see an item an error pops up saying that it cannot be found if you run into that issue there's a software called sims 4 train porter and here it's going to show you every single thing that you have on your library as you can see, it's all here. And so I can click on something. And if I go to files, it's gonna tell me what files this item has. And if I can't delete it in game, I can go over here, right click this file, and it's gonna show me where this file is located. 
as you can see. But you don't want to delete this file yet, because if you do, this is going to disappear from here and you can not see what these other files are and you can delete them. So what you're going to want to do is after you get this one, if you have Windows, you can organize these files by date. And if you have these files organized by date, the other files you're looking for are most likely right next to the one you just found because they were created right at the same time because they represent the same item. So it's two zero times seven files. So it's these two over here and three files that are zero times zero. And one of them ends in 27 instead of 26. So it's most likely this one, this one, and this one. Make sure that it is the correct one. And then delete. And if you go over here, the sim is no longer here. So that's another way of dealing with things. If you can't delete things directly from the gallery. And finally, the options in a file is where your graphics, sound, gameplay options are saved in. You can actually open this up if you want. And here you can see that it has saved all of your in-game settings. So if you don't save this file, so if I didn't save that file, I would have to change this up to whatever I had before. And sometimes I might not even remember what I had, so save that file. The only downside to resetting your game is now every time you play the game, and if I go for Criticism, to Criticism for example, you're gonna see that it pretty much says that I haven't seen any of these items before. So all these files from all the expansion packs, they all show up in yellow and have this star. It is more annoying when you go to build mode and you go to, through the catalog, everything shows up in yellow. It's, it annoys me a little bit. I don't know if, the, if there's a way for me to get rid of the stars. But yeah, this is the only downside that I know of and I don't know how to fix it. So have fun clicking on everything all over again. <laughs> Another tip that I have for you guys is every time you want to start a new game with a new family, instead of doing everything in the same folder, start a new one. So let's say I'm playing with this family, but now I want to start a brand new game. What do I do? I pick the folder I have here and I move it out of the game folder. So I take this out, I move it somewhere else. And when you open up the game, it's going to create, the game is going to create a brand new folder for you to use. And what do you do when you want to play again with the other family? You close the game, you move the save folder you have in here, the brand new one, out. And you move the one you had here before back in. I remember this was a thing with Sims 3. If I had more than two families saved in my menu, it would start like my game. And it's also a lot more safer because for every single game that I play, I have all the save files over here in the folder and it's all very organized and every time I want to play with family, I can just go over here, pick the folder, move it back in and move this one out. And if something goes wrong and, he, and your save file gets corrupted, you have backups. So it is a little bit of work, but I think it's worth it in the end. If you use mods, make sure to not have too many and try to go through your mod folder every once in a while, make sure, see what you have here, see what you don't want anymore, get rid of it, get new stuff. And every time the game updates, if you have mods, go check online if there's an update for those mods because they might break with an update and they might even break your game. So be very, very careful. I made a video on how you can remove unwanted CC from your game. If you don't know how to do it, I'm gonna leave a link for that in description. And every time the game updates, you know what to do. Pick up the mods folder, your saves folder, and move it out. Update the game and then move it back in because sometimes things can go wrong. And finally, what can you do while playing the game to make sure that the game is gonna run well? Because there are a few things that can actually slow down your game while you are playing the game. I wanna go first over to the game options because uh, this is what I have over here. But what I have here might not work for all of you because my computer was custom built and what I have here, it's what works best for it, but you probably have, but you have a different computer than what I have. So play around with the settings, see what works best for you. I've been experimenting with this nonstop for the past week and I think I finally came up with something that I think works really well with, what I, with my computer. And another thing that I found out actually is that if I play in window full screen mode, my game stutters a little bit and lags a little bit when I move the camera. 
And the only way to stop that is if I play in full screen mode, as weird as that sounds. If I play in full screen mode, there's absolutely no lag, but if I play window mode, there's lag. So really, go through all the things you have here, turn things on, off, change the quality, see what works best for your computer, because what I have here is not solution uh, or even the answer. But while you are playing with the family, you want to make sure that you don't have too much stuff in your Sims inventory or in your household inventory. If you have way too much stuff there, the game can start to slow down a little bit, it can start to lag a little bit. That actually happened while I was recording a series. I made my family move out to a brand new place and they took all their stuff with them and it was so painful to remove every single item she had in her family inventory. And there's not even a little button. <laughs> I had to go through every single file individually and every time I, click on, I clicked on an item, since I had so much stuff in there, the game would literally freeze and I had to wait until it would load the item up for, the, for me to delete it. It took me forever to delete everything she had in her family inventory. Also, if you play in a house with too much decoration or clutter, it might lag a little bit. I have experienced that before as well. And overall, I think this is all the tips that I have. There might be many more out there. These are the ones that I use and that I know of and that actually work for me. But if you have any other tips, you can leave them in the comment section. I'm sure everybody would appreciate that. We all had our issues and our problems with the game that we had to solve, so... Really, if you have any tips, don't be afraid to leave me in the comment section. Or even if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'll be there. I just really hope this helps you all. And until next video, happy simming and goodbye, everybody.